Okay, <clears throat> I have to sort of address this thing. It's interesting. Um, in my neighborhood growing up in the South Bronx, Patterson Projects, you know, Mount Haven section of South Bronx, there was a phenomenon, quite sure a lot of folks had the same phenomenon, where uh, if there was a fight in the neighborhood, I had a classic fight when these kind of fights in the neighborhood, you know, uh, you might just start with the two people and then it, it progresses over to the big schoolyard and then all of a sudden somebody, you know, the word has spread, fight! And I'm telling you, everybody, the whole projects would empty out. And, 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 and if you, well, where we were, then you have the, the other side where you have uh, like people between um, uh, Willis Avenue and St. Anne's Avenue. They all come, everybody comes, you know, to see this fight. Well, there's a fight. Well, I don't know if there's a fight going on. Let's just put it this way um, Yvette Cornell from Breaking Brown um, uh, said some things about, oh, well, reported from her life facts about her relationship with uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins. And uh, this has caused people to take sides and people to be back and forth, back and forth. I personally think it's a healthy thing, but we won't get into that right now. I should say this, I've, I've found Yvette Carnell by while watching Dr. Dr. Boyce Watkins. And to be more, and actually, I, so I've, before Yvette Carnell hooked up with Iron Me, you know what I mean, for the current Breaking Brown thing, there's an excellent series that they're doing. Um, I also, uh, even before all that stuff, I watched actually the Funky Academic, which is Irony's site, even before that, <laughs> because I just like, I mean, a lot of have type philosophy. I like philosophy. Uh, but, you know, I understood what he's talking about, but more importantly, he had those little, you know, uh, song breaks between, you know, uh, he hit the beat or whatever it is, and then there's some great, you know, Funkadelic or whatever, whatever would come on. And so I, I enjoyed Army on an academic tip. tip. I don't particularly enjoy Army with, with the Breaking Brown thing. I think he has to, they still have to get their stride. I give him another, another six months, whatever, nine months. Um, uh, no, six months, because they've been on for about three months, two months, whatever. Uh, like birth, to get their stride and, 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 and to, to get what's going on. Okay, back to Dr. Boyce. Uh, so Dr. Boyce Walker, you have to understand, he, he'll tell you, you know, his PhD is in economics, a difficult part of economics. It took him like, what, some, I think he said him like 10 years, whatever, to do that, which means that you're invested in that, which means that you're supposed to know everything about that field, you know what I mean? And that's your, for lack of a better term, your lane. Everything else is sort of tangential. Okay, not as tangential, but everything is not as essential as that. So when you approach a problem, you necessarily, if you took 10 years of study of your life, then when you approach that problem, you have to. There's no way around it. You have to, well, you have to incorporate what you were informed of, or uh, what influences you in your solutions to whatever you're doing. Okay. So he wants people, of course, to to to, to join his uh, let's call it army, you know, to, to join his crew uh, and, and dealing with the stock market. Okay. No, 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 no problem. Let me hold it right there. Let's go to go to something else. No, oh, no, no, let me just say it this way. Yvette Cornell pointed out one thing. He said, well, she said, to be on the stock market, you really have to have enough money to be, on, to be, in, to be in the game because you have to have enough money to lose, basically. If you're a gambler, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not a gambler. And, 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 and when she said that, well, I knew this before, but I was thinking back in, this must have been uh, like 1980, 81, somewhere around there, uh, I had been working in New York. And I had been living in Somerville, New Jersey, which is, well, it's all the way down. It's, it's like a rich area. Don't, don't worry about that part. Anyway, I used to, used to take the Raritan Line train up, you know, New Jersey Transit train up. Uh, you know, you switch over in, in Newark and get to the train to New York. And because, uh, it took about a, an hour and a half, somewhere around there, to get from, you know, my house in Somerville up to the city. And because of the, the things I was doing, I was doing a stage manager for theater and you know, doing some of the little odd jobs. I didn't want to get caught up in that rush hour thing, so I would leave early. You know, I, mean, I leave ridiculously early and get to the city. You know, maybe I might, uh, you, know, you know, get a newspaper, you know, what I read, whatever it is. Now, so I'd rather be super early, two or three hours early, <laughs> than to risk, uh, 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 risk not being able to work on time. Uh, uh, reference, uh, uh, Neely Fuller Jr., he'll tell you about uh, jobs and, and, and transport. Anyway, uh, let me not go off. But we had one time, and I clearly remember, this was a, 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 a New Year's Eve. I, think about, I forget, it was 1981 New Year's Eve, 1980, whatever it is. And as I was going through Penn Station uh, in New York, uh, uh, there was an arcade, a, a video arcade. It just sort of really opened up. And they had this game, Pac-Man. 
And I'm going like, oh, well, let me try this. And I try it. To, 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 things is eating these dots, and then it gets caught. In. And then it goes, all these sound effects. I'm, wow, this is interesting. So I started to play that, you know, waste a couple of hours with that. Anyway, that's the first time I had it. So when I came home that night, you know, I told my housemates and everything like that. I said, there's this incredible game. It goes, and they look at me like I'm really stupid, you know. But now I realize that if I had the money, any kind of money, to um, to invest in that company that was putting out, I think it was Midway, was was putting out or the parent company that was putting out the stock thing that was putting out this machine, I could have put money on that on that on that in that stock and made a killing, you know. But I didn't. I not only did I have the interest, I didn't have the the, the cash to, to to do that or the money to do that, the discretionary funds to do that. Okay, let's fast forward. I'm gonna stay on this tip for a second. Let's fast forward to uh, 2000. When, when did I know about this? Like 2000. Oh, no, it must have been like 2012, 2013. Anyway, Bitcoin is hitting the thing. And I'm going like, wow, this is amazing. If I had the money, I would invest in Bitcoin. And it was, it was since I'm a little, I can't get into the details. Anyway, even now, just invest in Bitcoin. Not all your money, but some money in Bitcoin because that's the future of currency. Anyway, the point is, if you don't have the startup, if you're in debt, you don't have the startup money to get into the stock market, what you going to do? You, you'll never have a, 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 the, the amount of money to make a real, what they call, killing. Now, yeah, I'm going to get into the, all the, the Autobots and the, with the algorithms and all the rest of that stuff where the, the real players that's in there, they get to jump on everything, the inside trading, all this stuff. I'm not going to get into all that stuff. But so the problem with the stock market is that we don't really know the stock market. Even somebody like Dr. Boyce, the only person that's got his PhD, a black person in this area, then, you know, we're, 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 it's going to be shaky. Okay, so that's me on the stock market. Let me go back to this thing between Yvette and, 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 and Dr. Boyce. Now, Yvette clearly stated that when she wanted to start with Dr. Boyce, she, she wanted to build a black media, which is like the area that I'm interested in. Well, uh, Dr. Boyce started like that, that that was his thing, but now he's going on to his financial literacy, his financial thing, which is all right, that's his, that's his lane. She, meanwhile, I mean, I don't know what she's, I don't think she studied media in, 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 at Howard University, but, but, but she's into black media. I want, a, I want, a, I want a, I want a media that helps the downtrodden. I want to get into the whole black white thing. Anyway, so the point is, so they have two separate agendas. There's, 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 they have separate agendas going in the same direction, so there should be no fight. So uh, now she can have a disagreement with Dr. Boyce, you know what I mean? And he can have a disagreement, well, actually, he's not going to disagree with black media, but he has to, he has to defend the, the economic thing because, well, between uh, 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 Yvette Carnell and, 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 Tom, and, and Antonio Moore talking about the reality of, uh, of black wealth, of disparity of, 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 of well, black money, black wealth, black debt, and disparity makes a whole lot of sense in the context of, of trying to deal with this stuff. And, and I think that, that, that the boys has to listen to that and, they, and they, they can have that fight. But my problem is that a lot of people just chime in because they're doing the personality thing. They're not really listening to what's, what's, what's being said. Now, I, I come down on the side of, uh, I come down on the side of every, we're in a, in a war situation. We're, we're in a situation of trying to, to go on a liberation. And I don't care who's fighting at what level you're fighting it on, I'm, I'm with you, you know what I mean? I'm with Boyce, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with Yvette. Yeah, I'm with Dr. Boyce, I'm with, Dr. I'm with Yvette, I'm with Iron Man. So, I don't have a problem with all this stuff. And I don't see why we have to fight. We have to draw these sides. It's just, if, you, if, you, if, if you understand military whatever, you know what I mean? You have different, uh, different platoons, different specialties doing different things. You have the people for fodder, you have the thing for your intelligence thing, you have all these things. And they, you don't want to have the intelligence there, the, the people that's really the fodder for, for the war. You can criticize the things we want, but you still got to go fight. You see me? So what I'm trying to say is we all have our little thing. I even, okay, this is, this is going to upset people maybe. I even think that all these, like the, the what they call it, tots, the everybody, it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, you have as long as you're as long as you're fighting this let's call it class war and you're that you're in the down you understand you're the downtrodden class or you have alliances to the downtrodden class even if you were a big time you know celebrity making a bunch of money you still you absolutely still need to maintain those ties so, you know give them some some, some some because eventually eventually their liberation will, will help you show up your your position because right now you're you're surrounded by vultures that, that just use you and, and, and all the rest of that stuff so not to make this too long which is long already 
So the point really is, don't we can we can have disagreements, but not so visceral, you know, like like knee jerk, you know, reactions to stuff. Let's think about it. watch the whole videos, L listen to the whole thing. Even though Boyce puts up a lot of stuff, you know what I mean. But the, but but the point is, you have to really think this through and understand where you are, where we are in this struggle for liberation. And it shouldn't be fighting. Well, it can be criticizing each other, but not fighting to each other to decimate. You know? Okay, so that's. That's me chiming in, me being T from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.